Welcome to this installment of Above the Clouds. In this podcast series, we are looking at inspiring Bhagavatam texts that have a lesson for us that will greatly improve our life. Today, we are looking at the second half of um, the 11th text of Canto 5, Chapter 1. Vayam vavaste tata esha mahashir vahamasave vishaya yasya disham. It means all of us, including Lord Shiva, your father, and the great sage Mahishi Narada, must carry out the order of the Supreme. We cannot deviate from his order. My dear listeners, we often come into a situation where we have our plan, but indications are there that there is another better plan which uh, we should maybe follow. The situation here is such a situation. Priyavrata, highly qualified, had gone into the Himalayas to live a life in bhakti, he had completely separated himself from his aristocratic uh, background. He had left the palace and was there meditating. However, the world needed a good king. When Svayam Bhuvamanu realized that there were no suitable kings after the Prachetas. He went to find Priyavrata in order to bring him back to material life. He saw his son absorbed in deep meditation, but Svayam Bhuva Manu interrupted him and said, please come back. The world is going to hell without you. You need to rule the universe. Priyavrata's answer was clear. No, I have retreated into the mountains to improve my spiritual life. When he refused, Lord Brahma descended from the Satyaloka planetary system to request Priyavrata also. He brought with him saints and what was more important, the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he said, Priyavrata, it's Krishna's desire that you rule. No one by any means can disobey the Lord's order. No one, even I, Brahma, down to the end can defy his control. And then Prabhupada adds something to this. He says, we may be proud of our own abilities, our austerities, penances, but it is clearly stated herein that one cannot surpass the laws and directions of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It is impossible. I remember I was once in such a situation myself. I wanted to go to India. I absolutely did not want to stay in Germany. But there were indications, divine indications, that made it clear that it was better for me to do my service in Germany. At that time, a very close friend of mine, knowing of my predicament, uh, sent me the Mahabharata in one volume. I think you all know uh, there is the story of Arjuna who did not want to fight but Krishna wanted him to fight and finally he was able to see Krishna's plan as being more important than his own plan. So what was important is that my friend wrote a message that had, has accompanied me and which I think is very good for all of us into the front pages of this book. You may have your plan, I may have mine, but Krishna has his 
and the Lord's plan will always happen. In order to joyfully, voluntarily, and full of enthusiasm mm, uh, to fo uh, follow the plan of the Lord, it is important to note that our so-called freedom in this world is the freedom of someone who is in a, let's say, a prison and has a little small range, but no freedom to leave uh, the prison house. There's a beautiful conversation between Prabhupada and one of his disciples, Rishi, who had left the process of Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada was asking him what he was doing now and Rishi laughed and said, I'm playing the saxophone and I'm studying and I'm working. I think I have more freedom now. Prabhupada looked at him and said, do you think you have freedom? What is your age? 29, Rishi answered. Are you free to not become older? No, said Rishi. And he laughed. Frankly speaking, I don't care. That's all right, Srila Prabhupada replied. But I am researching. I'm now 78. I don't wish to die, but I'm forced. But you too are forced. No one wants to be old. And then he says, to make his point very clear, that persons under the influence of Maya sometimes declare themselves, I'm free. Drug addicts and drunkards, for instance, think they are free to lie down in the street at any place they like. But what is really the use of saying one is free like this? Krishna says that whatever little freedom you have got, just surrender that freedom to me. In another place, Prabhupada said, one should find a place where when one surrenders, one becomes happy. That is Krishna. I know that sometimes it's not easy to give up one's own attachments to one's own plans. Let us return back to this conversation. Brahma stands before Priyavrata and wants to convince him uh, to become the king. He says, by the Lord's order, I'm telling you to become king. That person whom you and me worship with all our hearts is the only master. Do not find fault in him, your worshipful Lord. He is unfathomable. For he may quickly deliver someone entangled in worldly life and not deliver someone who has retired to the forest. Who can possibly understand his activities? My dear listeners, when I was in this dilemma that I had one plan to go and stay in India for good and found out that the plan of the Lord was different by all these indications which came in my life. There were three things which helped me and I would like to inspire you to look at these three things and to practice them. The first thing is prayer, especially at a time when something is fresh in your mind. Yesterday in a little program, there was someone who asked a question, a burning question. That person cried, had tears in the eyes and said, ah, I wish to surrender to the Lord's plan, but my material attachments hold me back. What is there 
to help. And we uh, answered prayer, especially now, where there are some tears in your eyes, where you are really struggling, where you acknowledge that you are not very uh, much able to solve things on your own. Bhaktivinoda Thakur gives us an amazing prayer. He says, one should pray to the Lord in this way. O oh Krishna, this material world is not a suitable place for me. Therefore, I have nothing to do with it. Still, I will fulfill whatever formalities are there, as long as I have this material body. But my main point is to engage in your devotional service. I think this brings us immediately to the second thing which we can do. Seva. Focus in Bhakti Yoga Seva. As the word says, uh, yoga, Bhakti Yoga means to connect in love. Do something you feel enthusiastic and inspired for. And you will see, as you focus on this, what you want to do for Krishna, what you voluntarily plan to do for Krishna, what is easy for you uh, to do, you will automatically increase the circle of your influence. It means, as Krishna says in the Gita, Mamchayo Vyabhichayana, by engaging in the service of the Lord, you will automatically become free from the pushing influence of the material uh, gunas, the loss of material nature, rajas, tamas, and sattva. You will actually uh, uh, jump out of, uh, uh, from behind the bars that hold you. This is a very important thing. Don't focus on what you can't do at the moment. Focus on what you can do at the moment and you will see how your influence and strength will automatically uh, increase. Now, finally, I would like to introduce a third way that can help you to act freely uh, in the will and plan of the Lord and feel the protection which comes from there. That is, surround yourself with udipans or those things which stimulate uh, your devotional mood. Bhaktivinoda Thakur has written a beautiful song where he says, I will not go anywhere in my life, giving up such udipans or stimuli for Krishna consciousness, for to abandon them is to give up my very spiritual life. Yes, udipans can be uh, things that you remind you, uh, sacred texts, uh, the remembrance of the holy places, uh, Krishna's flute, his footprints in the dust of Vindavan, or just very simple things like uh, karatals with which you can do kirtan. Surround yourselves with these spurter things. I would say these drops of the spurter reality which have come here and you will see, wow, your mood will rise and it will be easy for you to surrender. So I would like to leave you with three simple things to do in the week that will help you to go into the plan of the Lord, to be aligned fully. First, prayer. Second is increase your service to Krishna. Uh, do those things which you like to do and you will see that it will be easy for you to go even to those things where you are still not able to go because of attachments. And finally, surround yourselves with things that stimulate your Krishna conscious mode. 
I thank you very much for listening. I'm sure that this will be very helpful for you when you practice uh, it. I see you back uh, soon for the next Above the Clouds. <laughs>